This video will review the formulation of a linear programming problem. We'll look at the problem of the Electricomp Corporation, which manufactures two electrical products, air conditioners and large fans. The assembly process for each is similar, and both require a certain amount of wiring and drilling. Each air conditioner takes three hours of wiring and two hours of drilling. Each fan must go through two hours of wiring and one hour of drilling. During the next production period, 240 hours of wiring are available, and up to 140 hours of drilling time may be used. Each air conditioner sold yields a profit of $25. Each fan assembled may be sold for a $15 profit. We want to formulate this linear programming problem, which is a product mix problem. First of all, we want to have a problem statement for the company. The company wants to determine the product mix of air conditioners and large fans that will maximize profit, given its current resources. The resources, in this case, are the wiring time and drilling time. We want to carefully define the decision variables for the problem. We can use any letters as a notation for the decision variables. Here we'll just use X1, which is the number of air conditioners produced. We'll use X2 as the number of large fans produced. It's important to carefully define the decision variables um, so that we know what we're referring to when we create the objective function and the constraints. The objective function is the quantity that the company wants to focus on when they make the decision. In this case, we want to maximize profit. So the objective is to maximize profit. The objective function is the amount of profit for any combination of the air conditioners and large fans. Since air conditioners sell for $25 in profit, $25 times the number of units of X1 gives us the profit from that product. The per unit profit for each large fan is 15. So 15 times the number of X2 that we select will be the profit from large fans. When you look at the objective function, it may seem like we want to just produce as many air conditioners as possible. The problem is, the resources may limit the number of air conditioners that we can produce. The last part of the problem formulation are the constraints. We will always typically have constraints on the resources that are available. A constraint in general for a resource has this form. The resource that we use must be less than or equal to the resource that's available. If we look at the wiring time in this problem, it takes three hours for one air conditioner and two hours for a fan. So we will use three hours of wiring time for each x1 that we select, or three times x1. We'll use two hours for each large fan, or two times x2. Once we make this calculation, that will give us the amount of resource that's used for any combination of x1 and x2. This will have to be less than or equal to the wiring time that's available. Now 
Now we need a similar constraint for the drilling time. Each air conditioner takes two hours of drilling, or two times x1. Each large fan takes one hour of drilling, or just one times x2. I'll omit the one as a coefficient. That has to be less than or equal to the number of hours available. In some problems, there may well be other constraints. For example, we could put a constraint in that for a minimum number to produce of one of the products. This might be to satisfy a certain constraint on an order that's already been received. We could, we could insert a maximum number for one of the products because we know that there's only demand for a certain number. So there are other possibilities for constraints. Two constraints that we also want to make sure that we put in are the non-negativity constraints. Both x1 and x2 have to be greater than or equal to zero because it wouldn't make sense to produce a negative number of units. This is the formulation for Electrocomp's problem. Now we're ready to either create a graphical solution or a computer solution using Excel and Solver.